Now, this is a very important announcement. We are doing our best to produce high quality content here on Degenerate Plays and, of course, on Jill's channel, which we're going to talk about in a minute in a more upbeat tone. But in terms of just a straight up, very point blank, honest announcement, I've been having a very hard time keeping up on this channel because of how many hours go into it, but also how bad the economy is, how much YouTube seems focused on pushing massive multimedia conglomerate channels now versus smaller ones. Really, the only guys that are doing really, really good a lot of the times now that are smaller creators are people who manage to make it in before a certain date, which we did not. Essentially, their channel grew and grew, and I'm very happy for them. And, you know, even though those people with the 500,000 to, you know, even more subscribers than that, they may be doing just fine. But the economy has been pretty bad lately, and that makes advertisements worth a lot less. So those people are probably making half as much as what they used to. And what does that mean for us? We're not making much at all. Right, and this is my main job. I have a disability that makes it really hard to work more jobs that I don't talk about a lot. Jill actually went to get one as well outside of doing this with me. Um, and she's starting soon. But basically what we're getting to is, without sounding like beggars, our channel's not doing very well. One of the reasons we're actually bringing all of this up is because we wanted to introduce channel memberships to this channel, the main Degenerate J channel, because it would really help us out in the future. And we're going to get into a little bit more about that. So here's why. Jill and I talked about this off mic for a few minutes. I wasn't really sure if we should go into detail or not, because it's one of those things where if we do, there'll be a select group of people who are always like, well... I have all the answers, you should do this, or, oh, well, you're clearly faking it, or, oh, you're just trying to get sympathy. So, you know, it's one of those things where I don't bring this kind of stuff up very often because I don't really like giving people an in in that way. Mm -hmm. um, it's because when you give people an in, they go for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when they see like a, a crack in the armor, there's a lot of people who are just evil. You know, yeah. they're just pieces of shit who like go for it. But I have like quite a few health problems I don't talk about very much. Uh, the biggest one being that I have a thing called erythromyalgia, which is pretty bad. And the easiest way to explain it is it's like fibromyalgia. If you don't know, I, I pronounce that weird, but basically it's nerve pain that's really, really bad um, that makes it hard to do things. It all also, over your body, right? Yeah, fibromyalgia <laughs> is all over your body. Erythromyalgia starts in your hands and feet and spreads outwards, though, mm -hmm. from it. So when I was a kid, it was mostly just in my hands. Now it's in my hands and my feet and my forearms, and sometimes it affects my shoulders. Mm -hmm. But essentially the idea... WebMD in the comments will be able to explain it better than me, I'm sure. But essentially the idea is you have blood flow problems that sometimes you get too much, sometimes you get too little... And you can take all kinds of painkillers for it and all kinds of blood thinners and stuff. But at the end of the day, you're pretty much in pain 24-7. Yeah. Um, and I also have Raynaud's disease, which is pretty much the same thing. Um, so those two kind of interact and compound each other to cause chronic pain all the time. Which and make... they're both pretty rare to have. Yeah. yeah. So there's not actually a lot of good treatments or things for it. Uh, and if you go in like the, the help groups for it, like, oh, let's all talk because we all have it which I'm sure is helpful for some people. For the most part, it's just really sad. Yeah. Like, it's like, oh, I couldn't move today. That's sad. Oh, I, I haven't felt that way in a little while. I feel better right now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Which I'm glad people have each other, but it's one of those things that makes it really difficult to talk about because whenever I bring up issues with the channel, like, hey, you know, I work really hard on this and there's a reason why it bothers me when it's not doing good other than just kind of pouring my heart into it. It's also because it's one of the few things I can do well you know mm -hmm. and I, I still you can attest to this jill i still have problems doing the editing even yeah you still have to have limits like you have to take breaks and you have to have me edit sometimes and it the thought of going to another job not only affects your anxiety a lot because you have a panic problem but um which is technically called panic disorder which i had for a while but also, you wouldn't physically be able to do it because of your body limitations. Right. And I have worked other jobs before, like, pushing through it. 
which has not been fun at all. Which was really bad for your nerves when you did do it. Um, but it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I'm trying to get in better shape and, and be more physically able. And I know, especially for men, it's like a hard thing to talk about when you have body limitations because people kind of put all your value on just what you can do with your body. But like for me, oh my, the cats have discovered plastic bags in the background. For me, it's one of those things that's been really frustrating because I've been working really, really hard on this. And despite what I do, like no matter what I do, YouTube just doesn't care. Mm -hmm. So we're not actually trying to like dig for sympathy or make people feel bad for us. We're just kind of trying to explain the situation in how it's really difficult these days with YouTube, with the ads and stuff to make a living wage. And I actually have to go get a job now to make money so we can actually, like, live and pay off our credit card and stuff like that. Which certainly does not make me feel good. Kind of makes me feel like I can't provide. Because you used to be able to make a lot more money on here, but when the ads plummeted and the economy plummeted, things just got really shit and the platform's kind of broken. I mean, if you look at somebody like Markiplier who has, like, 34 million subscribers... He only averages about 1 million views a video. Yeah, 1 to 3. Isn't that kind of pathetic for 34 million subscribers? Well, not because of him. It's because they don't show it to people. Yeah. You know, like Jacksepticeye has talked about this too. Is like, you can put your entire heart into it. I mean, Jack's had it really bad. Mm -hmm. You know, like for him, he had like a personal tragedy happen. And not only did YouTube, like they stopped pushing pretty much all of our videos, like creators in general, um, especially the smaller ones. But also then, you know, you have people attacking you in the comments over that kind of stuff and bots mass spamming you with hate messages. That's something that's been happening to him a lot. Yeah. And ridiculous. YouTube has just no help. They just don't care. No. I mean, that's really what it comes down to is like we, the people who make stuff suffer for it and the people at the top who own the platform who could help them take all the money and say, fuck you. Pretty much. Yeah. And they're even making a lot of money off of things like businesses, like things like Vivo, Five Minute Crafts, not to throw these people under the bus, but these big companies make them so much money too that it's like, why bother dealing with the little creators? Right, why Why would you bother? And well, again, and you see it too, they're doing less associating with YouTubers. Mm -hmm. You know, so like, why would we take a chance on making a project with PewDiePie? You know, they will still do these things, but they do them less and less, it seems like. And the reason for it is because they're like, well, why would we do that when we could go work with Stephen Colbert mm -hmm. or like some late night show host who's been towing the line forever mm -hmm. and who, honestly, a lot of times the rules don't apply to. Mm -hmm. You can see a lot of times the corporate side of YouTube, the rules don't apply to them. They make all the money. So you'll see these massive conglomerates make all the money. They'll put up things like music videos of a girl with her butthole out. Yep. And it's like, oh, that's fine. But and they'll then, put up ads talking about abortion, but we're not allowed to talk about those things. Right. Again, I mean, I made a joke about a football player who uh, enjoyed his massages a little too much over on Degera Plays recently, and that got me demonetized. But then on the same video, I was getting ads when I went to watch it to see what they were talking about about how, like, this woman was talking about political campaigns and why it's good to vote for this person because uh, they'll allow her to get an abortion because she was essayed as a younger person yeah. and had to... You know what I mean? Like, so it's like, we can't talk about certain things, we can't make money, we but, can't get our views or videos seen, but everyone else can. But they can make the money off those videos. They run the ads still on videos that are demonetized, but they take all of the money for it even though somehow the video is not suitable for ads. Because they have this new rule now, like, you can't swear in the first 15 seconds. But in that Elden Ring part, you didn't swear in the first 15 seconds. You mm. just made a niche, subtle joke. At the expense of a football player who was accused of assaulting people. And which I don't think should really be bad. Like, that joke was in defense of the victims, by the way. Oh, yeah, and and you disputed it, so that means a real person actually watched the first 15 seconds of the video, heard you not swear at all, probably didn't even get the joke, and still went, ah, eh, let's just keep it demonetized. Well, unfortunately, a lot of people in the positions of modding, whether it be Reddit, YouTube, etc., are brainless. Well, like, here's the thing, is YouTube doesn't follow their own rules with their own things that they do. 
but then they expect us to follow their rules, but then they don't even treat them fairly. And then it forces small people like us who should be able to make a living off of YouTube if they didn't take 50% of the profits to, to then go get other jobs, but then still be expected to post every single day. Otherwise, our channel will just die because the platform encourages posting an over insane amount. That's why people stopped editing their videos. That's why people stopped making content that matters and put, started putting up three videos a day talking about whatever bullshit just comes to mind, like Twitter, because that's how you make money on this platform now in order to actually eat. Yeah, you basically spam the platform with crap and see if something hits. And the, the thing is, this is one of the only platforms that you can get into fairly easily to make money at when you're somebody like us who has a disability, who has mental problems, who has a hard time fitting into society normally. Yeah, you know, we're we, like Joaquin Phoenix Joker over here. Well, there's there's not a lot of jobs out there for people who have a lot of problems. You know, like, even think about it for, like, people you know who might have autism and stuff like that. It's hard for those people, too, to get into jobs, but they'd be able to do YouTube pretty easily and be able to make money at that. But instead of YouTube caring about those people who need at-home jobs and need to be able to make money... They just say, nah, fuck you. Who cares? Well, and whenever you bring it up on YouTube, there's just an overabundance of people who have no empathy who don't care either. Yeah. Which is unfortunate because they also expect you to care when they have problems. Yeah. That's something I've noticed all the time. Luna has opinions in the background. That's something I've noticed all the time, too, is like, I will talk about something in my life that sucks and I will get no empathy from certain people, and I'll see those same people in my comments complaining about something in their life a month later. Yeah. And they'll think I don't remember them. Yeah. But it's like, bro, like, where were you? Like, you know, you're not the main character. Everybody has these problems. Um, and, like, there's a lack of empathy and understanding from the top down and even at the bottom. You know, and It's really unfortunate. There's not a whole lot of jobs for people who have so many problems. I mean... If you look at it, like, I remember watching PewDiePie when I was a lot younger, and I know people have their opinions on him, but he did a Draw My Life video talking about how he kind of fell through the cracks in school, how school just was really hard for him, how doing jobs was just really hard for him, and how he felt like he didn't fit well into society, so he tried to fit in on YouTube, and that then when he blew up, it was a godsend to him, because he was finally able to make a living off of something that he didn't want to kill himself doing. Mm -hmm. And that's how a lot of times it feels for us and a lot of other people who do YouTube. A lot of people who go to YouTube are people who need help a lot of times. And I think it's really... Or psychopaths who, like, want to game the system. That's true. And a lot I, of that, too. And I think it's really upsetting that instead of caring about the people who are making the money, you know, the corporate side of YouTube, instead of caring about people like us who are making the money, they just say, whatever, who cares? I'll and, just take all the money and let them suffer, even though we pretend to care about your mental health. Well, and I'm not going to be an asshole here, because I think there's a way I could phrase this It would be very mean, but it also frustrates me that the older parts of audiences who, because I don't want to blame the audience, but I do just want to say, the older parts of audiences who are not minors, you know, who don't need to ask their parents for everything, who have very good positions in life, they demand everything for free, but don't realize they're doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something that happens too, is like, for me, when I see someone who needs help, I'm willing to give them a dollar. Yeah. You know, I mean, even though I don't make a livable wage and Hey, maybe that's cause I'm not great with my money, but I don't know. Um, you know, like for something I've noticed too, is that it's looked down upon to ask for help. It's looked down upon to say, Hey, listen, I put 70 hours a week into this and I make below minimum wage. Uh, I have channel memberships for three bucks that really help me out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like when I said that about Degera plays and stuff. Yeah. And like you get comments from people saying like, oh, you're begging for that. Or, oh, you don't deserve that. I could just go watch this for free. And, and I think that people, especially in America, have been so taught to be consumers and that you get the maximum for the littlest possible that they're willing to accept what you said. They're willing to accept five videos a day that are just absolute trash that don't mean anything they're willing to accept oh well i don't care if say like three really good creators i like quit youtube or honestly in some cases end their own lives which is unfortunate because we've seen that happen a lot on youtube partially mm. due to the mental health stress that youtube says they care about but never do anything about yeah um but also we see those people basically go out of business yeah and it's 
it would be like if you if you preached about how much you loved your local mom and pop shop, but then when they went out of business, you just didn't care and went right back to Walmart, you know? Yeah. That's kind of how it feels on YouTube because people will say like, well, they care and they want to see you succeed and they don't want you to fail. But at every opportunity for them to help, they've been convinced that if you need help, you're the problem. That's why things like Patreon, things like merch, things like channel memberships, all of the YouTubers that you see that are able to do those things are doing it because they don't make enough money. Oh, and they get shit for it, too. Yeah, and they get shit up for it. I mean, that's why there's so many women out there who are doing OnlyFans. Do you think all of them want to do OnlyFans, or do you think that they're just doing it because they need more money? I mean, I'm about to sign up myself at this point. Yeah, I mean, there's the that's the problem. It's like, you know, a lot of you guys care about us. And I, I really sympathize and agree with that, and, and I love that. And I'm not trying uh, to be mean. I'm not trying to say our audience sucks or anything like that. I want to make that clear. No, I know, and I'm not trying to say that either. So the reason we kind of made this video is to try and say, like, hey, we're struggling. You know, Jill has stuff on her shop for under $10 a lot of times. We have channel memberships. We have Patreon. Even if you just want to do that for one month, or if you want to just buy one thing, that helps us out a lot and helps us further our dreams of being able to do this. I don't even know if I'm supposed to say this or not, but like this last month I put in 70 hours a week and I walked away with about $700. Yeah. Now I know there's people in worse situations. Fine. I always hear that whenever I talk about something. That doesn't mean this situation doesn't suck. You know, that's something I think a lot of people lose sight of is like, yeah, I could be homeless. Absolutely. I totally get that. I'm grateful for a lot of stuff. I mean, we may as well be homeless, though, if we didn't have your mom helping us with the house. Like, here's the thing, you know, if let's say we lived in this house or in an apartment and we only got $700 a month, that doesn't cover property taxes or rent, that doesn't cover electricity, that doesn't cover water, that doesn't cover food, that doesn't cover the cats. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's not enough for a person to live off of in such a terrible economy that we live in. Well, it's just a very unfortunate thing, too, that even... Trying to talk about this, I basically had a panic attack and asked you if we should just delete this whole thing because I didn't want a bunch of people to just dogpile me and say like, oh, you can't provide for your family. Oh, you're begging, blah, blah, blah. Because I've seen it all before. I've seen people try and say, hey, listen, I'm struggling and people make fun of them. And then those same people, by the way, I'm not going to name names of who I'm talking about, but those same people who say like, I'm struggling with mental health. I'm struggling with this. I need help. You know, they'll be mocked. They'll end their life. And then those people will be in the comments like, oh, I remember that creator. They were so good. Like, oh, I miss them. It's like, bro, you killed them. You killed them. You fucking killed them. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's it's just like the lack of empathy on the internet is insanity. Because when I see someone having a hard time, I want to help if I can. I have, you know, and I don't advertise it. I've given money to people before in our audience who need it. I have sent boxes of food to people before. Who have told me, hey, I'm homeless. Like, I don't have anything. Mm -hmm. You know, I watched your videos at, like, my grandma's house. And I just got kicked out of my house. And I have nowhere to go. You know, yeah. stuff like that. I have helped people before. I don't advertise it because I don't... That's not... I don't care for recognition on that. That's yeah. not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say I try and help people where I can. And I just feel like every time we need help... Nobody cares. Yeah. Does that make sense? And sometimes I kind of feel like the only person who does care is like, shout out to our friend, um, Allie and shout out to our friend, Will, um, that they, they actually make an effort to talk to us and to sometimes even buy things from us. And like with my friend Allie, I buy things from them too, um, uh, because they also own a shop. And sometimes I kind of feel like those are the only two people who really care about if we're getting, you know, our well-being you know other than nate and t yeah yeah, yeah. Who, i know that if like we hit the absolute end of the line would help us mm -hmm. but like it's just frustrating because you know you go on youtube you go on these websites and you're always told like how big of an impact you have or like how great what you do is or blah 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 but like then you know you shut it off and you're struggling to make ends meet yeah and i don't think people actually get to see that mm -hmm. you know so it's very sad and very hard to deal with too, especially, you know, when it's, when you, a lot of times we kind of feel like we went from having everybody showing up to our birthday party to only two people showing up to our birthday party. Does that make sense? Yeah. YouTube doesn't show when we upload and a lot of people who see when we upload don't care. Mm -hmm. 
And you know what? I understand that saying that will probably lose me some subscribers, but I don't need people like that around. You know, people who legitimately don't care about me. And we wanted to foster a caring community. That's also what I want to do on my channel is, like, foster a community of people who like me for me, not just what I'm talking about. Right. I don't know. I don't I don't know if I have much to add because I feel like it's just a hard thing to talk about. And I'm sure most people didn't make it to this point anyway. Um, do you have anything kind of to, to add in? Well, I think you could mention, you know, it's really hard for you every day to just get out of bed sometimes because of how... Yeah, that makes me sound pathetic. Well, no, because of how um, you have your problem with your erythromyalgia, you know, you get hurt extremely easily. Like, you fell down on the ice yesterday and it hurt your back more than it would have hurt a normal person, in my opinion. And that's not pathetic. It's not pathetic to have a disease or have a problem or have a disability. It's something that's normal for you and normal for a lot of people in the world. And it makes it hard for you especially to be able to get up every day and see all of the numbers going down on this channel and know, like, is this going to go anywhere? And then start thinking all of those bad things about yourself. Um, and I think that's partially why you wanted to talk about it and make this video is to kind of say, like, hey, I don't really know what to do because mm -hmm. I have this disability you know, there's not really a whole lot of avenues I can go into, and this is the one thing that I really enjoy doing, but I'm not getting enough help with it. Right. No, I, I, I agree. I don't know what to add to that. Sorry. No, no, no. I, I think that that's, that's true. It's just I don't want to go on, like, a whole thing complaining a lot. I was always taught that you, you know, should just be grateful for wherever you're at, and that, like, you should just accept it, kind of, and, you know, like, just do your best and stuff. But I guess what's really disheartening to me is I was also taught that if you work hard, you will succeed. You keep working hard. You keep pushing. You know, you always push ahead. And you always do good things for other people. And, like, that'll come back to you. Well, I don't think there's also anything wrong with asking people for help. I mean, that's partially why we made this video is to ask those of you who are able to spend an extra dollar every once in a while you know, subscribe for a month to the Degenerate Plays and then cancel it and then come back. Even things even things like watching a video once in a while, even if it's not something you're super interested in. I know that sounds silly, mm -hmm. but like, you know, I'm just saying hypothetically, maybe you have to pee and maybe there's a short video that you're not super interested in. A notification comes up, you press play, set your phone down, you pee, you mm -hmm. come back, the video is basically done. And whoa, you just happened to miss it, but the watch time doesn't know that. And I guess at the end of the day, like for me, what I was going to get at before, um, you know, uh, Captain Feelgood over here, who I appreciate very much, jumped in, was just that I feel like those things I was taught aren't true. You know, like that if you work hard, you won't necessarily succeed. Mm -hmm. And if you give to people, you won't necessarily get help when you need it. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of, like, I I feel like I was fed a lie. And YouTube takes 50% of everything you make, too. I believe it's about that. It's it, quite a bit. It's pretty ridiculous. And, you know, for somebody who already doesn't make a ton off of ads, because even though 100,000 subscribers is a lot, and we get, in my opinion, pretty good views, the ads just aren't there. And it's really ridiculous. So that's partially why I have my shop for people to buy merch. Because even though, you know, maybe not all my stuff says, Ooh, Degenerate Jay's the best guy in the world. All of our stuff still helps support both of us. I'm glad it doesn't say that. That would be cringe. <laughs> so that's actually why we're starting memberships on this main channel as well. So on Degenerate Jay, we're going to have some awesome uh, memberships that are going to have some really cool stuff. But we're still going to have Degenerate Plays memberships. We're still going to have the Patreon, and we're still going to have Enchanted Glamour, which is where we sell merch and all of the awesome stuff that I make because I love being an artist. So you guys should stay tuned for that because that will come very soon and it'll be really awesome. And if you join those memberships, you might even be able to get a discount on my store. So just to kind of reiterate, before we had the Let's Play channel memberships, and those are still going to exist, like Jill clarified, but... There is also going to be a lot of tiers on this channel of membership. All of them are going to have various perks with each membership tier having the perks of the tier before it. So we're going to go over that in more detail in an upcoming video. I didn't really want to make this longer than it already is. But I did want to clarify that just so you know that 
there is the memberships here, but also there's memberships over on Degenerate Plays that we want you to check out too if you're interested because that's a really awesome other channel we run as well. So we do hope that more people will check that out. If you like hanging out with us and talking and, you know, enjoying the gameplays and stuff like that when we play through games, that's a really cool place to do it. And we do put exclusive videos up there. And we do, I think, a very good job of balancing not cutting out content, but making additional content. I'd say I do that because I edit a lot of those. Um, and a lot of times what I do is, like, sometimes there will be something, let's say, in an Elden Ring, where you guys can't find where you're going, but you're having a pretty funny conversation. And it's like, well, I don't want this Let's Play to be 500,000 parts, but I also don't want to cut out completely this kind of funny conversation. So why don't we just have members be able to listen to the funny conversation, even though this isn't really furthering the story of the game. There's also times where we will revisit games or we'll go back and do other parts of things, you know, that normally we wouldn't do on the main Let's Play channel. Mm -hmm. And that kind of stuff is going to be there as well. And I, I think it's relatively cheap and a good value. And then we also do have a Patreon as well with exclusive content too. But if you are a member on Degenerate Plays, you actually get a discount on my website, which is pretty cool, like I mentioned. And that is one of my biggest dreams is being an artist and being able to support us with my art. It's something I've always wanted to do ever since I was a little kid. So it means a lot to me, you know, that you guys try to support me with that. And that's why I wanted to give a discount to those of you who are members. So thank you very much to those who did listen this long. We really do appreciate you. And we do appreciate our audience. You are very kind and gracious. I know a lot of the people in the audience are very uplifting and really do try and help. And that's just something we need right now. It's been a really rough, honestly, year at, at least. I've made a few videos like this before, but I've never gone into all of the details. It's been very hard and, you know, something I'm, I'm wasn't sure if I want to talk about it all that I'll just kind of throw at the end is I think even people notice I breathe kind of hard and stuff in certain videos and I have lung scarring because I've had pneumonia like three times and then I got COVID as well. And so I just have a lot of health problems that make things really hard for me that it feels like I can't talk about without getting a lot of crap. But at some point, I feel like I just need to be pretty straightforward with. And if I get, you know, people being mean to me about that, then that is what it is. I feel like that says more about them than me. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. You know, we appreciate your kindness. We appreciate your support. Every view, every comment, every, you know, membership, every patron, every, you know, person who just listens through the video and, and enjoys it and is part of the community or goes over and joins our discord and wants to talk and make friends and stuff like that. Those are all appreciated. And those are all things that mean the world to us. We hope you have a great day. And as always, everyone stay shway.